As far as the Flutie family was concerned growing up, our next game was the biggest event of our lives, and it was always that way. We didn't have a lot of money, but anything we ever wanted. If we needed a new glove, we got the new glove and we skipped dinner. You know, if we needed a bat, we got the bat and the, the rent waited for another month. You know, that's the, that's the way it was. Sports was first, and when I say sports was first, I mean pushing the rent aside and dinner occasionally aside. I mean, sports was first, absolutely. As I look back, big picture, I don't regret a moment of my career in the Canadian Football League. McManus has time, has a man, the catch is made by Darren Flutie. I always loved football, I loved the contact of football. I loved the challenge of football. McManus looks to his right side, floats it up into the end zone, Flutie, touchdown! The whole McManus-Flutie thing came from a lot of hard work, though we just worked together all the time, but the 94 season, in the Western final against Calgary when we were British Columbia certainly was a moment that um, I know I'll never forget and BC Lion fans, I don't think we'll forget it either. They went one-on-one -on -one with me, we ran a route, I got open in the end zone, Danny hit me right on time and that feeling I had when I caught that football and knew we had beaten Calgary. It was Doug, Dave Sapungis, Alan Pitts, all these great players for Calgary. They, they had their Grey Cup tickets picked out in Vancouver. They had planned the trips, they had flights booked already, and I knew that. And then to beat them on that day, it was, it was a great moment. We went to Edmonton together in that 96 season, and I think we were both kind of at the pinnacle of our careers. On second down, McManus under center, guns it over the middle and making the catch and getting the first down. It's caught by Darren Flutie. Two great years in Edmonton for us, and then of course we went, we're off to Hamilton with Coach Lancaster, and that, that has its own kind of storybook ending. But now Hamilton in 97, while we were having those good years in Edmonton, was one in 17. So Coach Lancaster goes there, he brings his quarterback that he's had success with, Danny McManus, his receiver that caught a lot of the balls from Danny, myself, and we had Ronnie Williams at running back, Archie Amons, Amerson at running back, Morielli, we had um, Andrew Grigg at receiver. Now we had a, a formidable team, and I'll tell you what, we just took off from day one of training camp. Attack us, boy! We came here on a mission! We knew we were a good team, and we knew we were great cup contenders, and we ended up going to the Grey Cup in 98, uh, losing to Calgary and then coming back in 99 and finally be beating Calgary in the Grey Cup. Hit from the backside as he let it go and it goes complete to Flutie at the 42. We knew we were the best team in the league at that point. I mean, no one else might have thought that, but we really thought that and that's half the battle. Growing up in the Flutie family, was it was all about sports. My brother Bill, my brother Doug, of course, and my, my oldest sister, Denise. My brothers were a lot older than I was. I mean, Doug, he's four years older than I am. My brother Bill's five years older than I am. So to kind of get involved in their games to begin with is a challenge. Most fun I had as a kid in the game we played nonstop in our basement, I would be standing up and I'd get a football and I would do the up and over like Walter Payton and they'd be on the other side. So when I landed, they would just drill me either into the ground. I mean, they loved just tearing me up, but. It, I loved it too. I mean, just the getting hit and having a football in my hand and thinking I was Walter Payton. It was just, it was so much fun. I played my first five seasons with the BC Lions, that first season being with Doug in 91. That was perfect. Now we played professional football and we were playing it together on the same team. I mean, it couldn't have been better. Once I got on the field with Doug, it was literally like being in the backyard of our house growing up. He would point I, uh, look at that, you know, just point to people and instantly we knew what each other was thinking. And Doug just kind of head nodded to me. As I turned my head, the ball's right there, touchdown. I mean, it was that type of stuff over and over for only for eight games. That's all we played together, but uh, so much fun. Football is the one thing I think that I can speak intelligently about that I love, I have a complete passion for. So it was absolutely wonderful to, to hook up with CBC. As I did the audition, that passion of the game and kind of knowing exactly what was going on, the free safety's coming down, it's cover zero, quarterbacks looking to the middle of the field. That's my ABCs of what I've learned my whole life in football. Not scripted, not studio stuff, but be up there and, and see the game and just talk about it. So I loved it. 
I was at one of my kids' basketball games. My brother Doug's next to me, Bill's around somewhere, and he tells me, you know, you're going to go into the Canadian Football League Hall of Fame, and my first thought is, how could I possibly be that old to be eligible to go into the Hall of Fame? I just couldn't believe it. I went to last year's event and saw Alan Pitts and, and Giz and, and Bobby Jurison and Matt Dunnigan, and I remember coming into the league and watching those guys play and be like, I'll just never get to that the level of excellence that those guys are at. I mean, they, they know how to play this game so well. And then, bang, here I am. You know, I get the call to go into the Hall of Fame, and I'm in this elite club. I guess it didn't sink in for a long time, but as it gets closer, believe me, it's sunk in. My years in Canada have been the best years of my life as far as professionally doing something for a living, and never forget it.